Welcome, welcome, Woo! welcome Whoa. to Collider Live. It is Friday. We are on our first week of Collider Live Phase 2. It's very exciting for us. I am Dorina Dorina para mis hermanos hispanos. You can also call me Thick Thor of Collider yes. Live. My inner Thick Thor. Wow. And to join me in talking about nerd news, furry news, Producer extraordinaire, our Captain America with longer nails, Mark Riley. Oh my God! Hello, thank you. <laughs> of course. Also, maybe. My, yeah, it's. Are, but are, not are, did there you cut then. them or yes, no? Of course, I've cut them. There's nothing wrong with gentlemen's nails. I have the same thing. Yeah, there okay, you are. Okay, well, he cut them. Oh, he cut them. Yeah, because he, like he, he sometimes doesn't. So. Do you manicure? Saying. Do you manicure? No, I cut them myself and I do it, and because I never want to be made fun of uh, on the okay. show again because of my nails. Fair okay. enough. That's well, what that it, was the last I'm one. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you guys. It was not the last one. Have fun, everyone. Also. Also making his debut on Collider Live 2.0, <laughs> my favorite Bolivian Thanos, John Roca. <laughs> Inevitable. Perfect. I love that, man. Have done Inevitable. <laughs> Inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Thank man. You. Thank you so me glad on. to have you. Roca, you will be here a lot more oh, yes. now that the, nice. uh, the revamp you. is happening. Um, 2.0. Absolutely. Yes, the audience loves you. Ass. We love you. I love them. Thank we, you yes. all so much for having me. And also, I love you guys too. Yeah. in the booth, uh, his spidey senses are tingling. Mm, I like this. <laughs> Our very own Spider Man, Mr. Cody Hall. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Hi, Cody. Doing how? great. <laughs> you sound very Cody. excited, Cody. I am very hyper right now. Yeah. What did you do? I chugged an entire Rockstar Lemonade before the start of this show today, and wow. I'm ready to do a fucking great time. <laughs> 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 yes! Extreme Collider Live! <laughs> did you get over the Hooba Stank thing, or are you still no, contemplating that? No, sent me down that spiral. Oh, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> in 2004. Also, uh, uh, last but not least, uh, I am Groot. We are Groot. The beautiful Alex Marzonia. What up, what up? How are you, Alex? I'm great. Everyone's in a good mood today and I love it. Good. Yeah. Glad to hear. Darina, I, all the Marvel references. Well, it's Collider Live Phase 2. Get yeah. it? So, the Avengers. Oh! oh get it? Good. I was making an I Avengers. I just got it. Yeah. I just got it. Okay. God damn it. You're good. supposed to be Captain America, Mark. Well, yeah. I'll take Captain America. Yeah. Well, who would you be then? I don't know. That's America's ass over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I have zero ass, so that really doesn't work. It's true. You have a small butt. Oh, jeez. Well, the the but, level just went up in my ear. <laughs> but but also, I mean, you're basically super our Superman, right? So yeah, Captain so America Captain Mar is okay, kind of the I'll Superman of Marvel. Well, you know, Marvel now so. back in the MCU are the X Men, so Wolverine because of the nails. Exactly. And I do have rage. That's sometimes. true. Maybe you should be Wolverine instead. I have, I have rage when I'm in the car <gasps> well, driving and people cut me off, <laughs> and I want to destroy them. <laughs> also, I mean, we can also go around the office and see who has the nicest ass, and they can be our Captain America. That's true. So there you we go. can. Well, he's out here, Kalinowski. He has the nicest ass. Does he? Is it? Everybody. Yeah. Knows that. Is oh, it true? It's a good have, ass. I have not checked it out. That is, that <laughs> I'm is missing a, out. It's a good ass. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Next time he's in the office. <laughs> oh. This uh, this uh, went uh, an interesting. It's well, let Friday. me just check this off it's the uh, outline. Talk about people's asses. Yes. Thank you. There it is. Casual Friday. There it is. Uh. Oh my gosh. So, what are we talking about today, Mark? You what know, is Darina, the nerd news? The nerd news is absolutely off the hook right now. I'm 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 shocked that we have so much news. So let's start with. Do you want to start with this Joker news? Yes, because it makes me happy. I knew it would make you happy. It makes me very happy as well because Roca, you know this. Yes, Darina, you know this. Before Joker came out, there were a lot of people. Judging it, I would yeah. say, before they even saw the damn thing. Because people love to do that. People yeah. love to do that. Yeah. They were worried that it was going to do this or that. I don't want to get into that kind of stuff on, like, the worries because it never came true, uh, thankfully. God, mm -hmm. thankfully. But it's one of those brilliant movies. It's one of my favorites of the year. Probably top five of the year. It's yes. probably in the top two. At right now, at least. Right now, I have the platform at number one and Joker at number two. Mm -hmm. uh, I love these movies. So, you have to see Parasite. Uh, I need to see Parasite. Yes. You need to see the platform. I do. And I, I cannot find when it's going to drop on Netflix. I know I'm getting mm. angry. I like um, All right, Wolverine. It's Extreme Collider Live. It's what we need. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nick. So, so Joker has now made $955 million worldwide. Holy crap. On a 62.5 million production budget. Mm -hmm. So guess what, everybody? This is the most successful comic book movie of all time. Yay! Ever based, ever, ever made based on the budget to the uh, profit. 
Mm-hmm. That's this, incredible. This is incredible and uh, a huge win for DC. Uh, it's really Warner nice Brothers. to see Warner Brothers. It's nice to see that uh, this is happening, that we can have this, and that we all love the mm. movie sitting here. And that a risk taking movie. A risk taking movie. Yeah. Right? Because everybody thought it was going to be like, what, why, are, why are we even doing this? Right. Yeah. No, nobody wanted that. Yeah, and, so. and and it's interesting that, you know, we're, we were talking, we're coming off of the Zack Snyder movies, and everybody's like, where the hell? You know, meanwhile, I'm over here going, I like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess, you know, what happened? Um, Same. So, but then Justice League, right, that was, I think that was the dark moment in the DC mm-hmm. franchise, because Justice League, well, let's call a spade a spade here. Yeah. That movie sucks. Well, I, come I, on. I, I, I'm, with, I'm with Roca. Yeah. Some of it's How really cool. How are you cool. people... Yeah. So, some of it's cool. I, the, I agree. Some the of it Flash is cool. stuff was fun. The Flash stuff is cool. There's like, a lot to enjoy. I know, but it, that it was not. It means hope I, I in my right, world. Right, right. I know the CG. A, I couldn't do it. Was really that's bad. And that's the first fucking shot of the movie. But you defend BVS, and that has a Martha moment, which I would argue eclipses that mustache oh, moment. No, the Martha moment works yeah, for me. Martha, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mo- Hot take. Martha moment works. Did for you me. see the Ultimate Edition? Yes. It was even more boring. How dare you? I actually liked it a lot more. I yeah. mean, that the You like Jimmy Olsen like, being yeah. a spy? I didn't care about that. I'm sorry. BVS has grown on me like you wouldn't it has. believe. It's I like love Ivy this on movie. your wall. I love this movie so much. I love the original cut and the ultimate cut. I really mm. do. I will put that thing on. If Everyone it's on in the TV, comments is like, holy <laughs> crap. Yeah, I know. Yeah, great. <laughs> Tweet no, at me. No, but some of them Jesus. do like it. So. I, no, I just really, really love that yep. movie. And it was like I wanted when when Zack Snyder was, was cer- uh, unceremoniously let go. Um, I was like, great, you know. I wanted to see his Justice League. Yeah, well, I so. still want to see it. We might, we might, we, we might. may, we hope. So the, I mean, those, the Snyder Cut peeps on Twitter really a, want it. It's a thing that won't die, Dorina. Yeah. Keep people keep. And you know what? Momoa doesn't let it die. Mm-hmm. No, nope. Snyder doesn't let it die. Nope. Uh, because they know it's good. Yeah, the second Ray, unit aerial director. Uh, I think Ray uh, Fisher had something to say about it as well, and then other people have chimed who in. Who I the loved time. in Justice League. Yeah, uh, Junkie Cyborg XL was great in Justice League. How did you not like yeah, that? Yeah, Junkie XL. He's no that there, no look, listen there are moments yes there saying. are moments that I like I do like the flash taking on yeah. superman where he looks mm-hmm. and everything and mm-hmm. that was good I just I missed I was really hoping it's a superman thing I'm biased yeah. I was really hoping they would go a little bit deeper into the death of superman Well because we we needed a man of steel sequel Yes, yes so we did what, um, yes what we did happened, anyways, I'm, I'm going to be cursing today what the fuck Warner Brothers no. where is man <laughs> wow. of steel 2 wow Mark, it's, it's casual friday I and so. I have a little Cody, bit of Cody did you give Mark some of your rockstar drink <laughs> the whole office is ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a it's been a busy week, and it's been hyping, and so people are in, uh, like it's Friday. I said to my I rolled over to my girlfriend this morning. I was like, I got eight hours of badness, and I come back to your arms, baby. I can't wait. Uh, there, because I know this I is gonna like be it, fun. Man. Every day you walk in here this week has been fun because yeah. you know what's happening day to day, and it's a blast to see so many changes happening. So yeah, we'll see. We'll There's see. Lot, exactly. We yeah. shall see. We shall see. But Joker, That's this an- is this is great because I think what you brought up, Doreena, earlier is fantastic. There are a lot of people talking ahead of them. Do we need this movie? It's an incel movie, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be violence, blah, blah, blah. We got got, uh, uh, policemen posted outside screenings. Literally almost nothing, nothing happened. Uh, There were occasional, two occasional things, but you can't really tie it fully to Joker. Dancing on the stairs? Yeah, yeah, people went dancing on the stairs. I mean, that's really what happened. Mm -hmm. All this kind of stuff, it means nothing. What it is is this is a quality film that people came back to over and over and over again. Millions of people came back to over and over Mm -hmm. again to give it the box office that it has now. And people who snarked about it and enjoyed snarking about it have to kind of eat a little bit of crow here because (laughs) the film made what it made. And if it's the highest uh, uh, grossing comic book movie ever, mm-hmm. this isn't like Transformers or this isn't like these other films. Well, no, it's good. No, no, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> it's that it's universally reviled by the fans. This is actually universally beloved by the fans who go to yes. see it, which and not is just, why. And, and not just fans, yeah. Not Critics just comic book too. fans, but uh, also just the general audience. Yes. I've heard from a lot of friends that aren't. Uh, comic book fans, right? They, they they don't they see Mystique from the X Men as like the Blue Lady, right? Like they don't right, they're right. not nerds like us. They have lives, yeah. and so uh, they love this Fair movie. Enough. They they love the message yes. of this movie. It, it's 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 incredible, and and I'm and I'm excited to see more of this. Yeah. More yeah. rated R movies, more rated R comic book movies, uh, more standalone either hero or villain movies that doesn't that don't need to be connected to the universe mm. because we get a, a better character story, yeah. better character arc. So I'm very happy about this. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my God, do it. So uh, what else have we got today, Mark? Uh, well, let's get into, uh, let's talk about this Star Wars stuff. Okay. Okay, because this is a part of our headline. There was a earnings call yesterday with Bob Iger, and he was, you know, what he does is he, he tells everybody <laughs> what's going on, and there was like a little tiny aside, as it were, mm-hmm. that he said, after Rise of Skywalker... We are going to go on hiatus for the movies, but don't worry. We're going to have a lot of you know TV to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're. you're I, <laughs> I just think it's funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, how dare you? First of all, I, I, I love my movies, but I understand what's coming. So, if you read between the lines here, uh, and I'll put this to the table here. That means that the Benioff and Weiss situation has probably caused the ripple to that 2022 release that they had mm-hmm. targeted mm-hmm. for the Benioff and Weiss, no longer there. So we're on this kind of floating in space like Leia before she realized she had the Force, right? So right. we were like, what are we going to do? Mary how, Poppins how, how, Mary, po- Yeah, Leia yeah. Poppins. How yeah. are we going to wake up and get ourselves back on the mothership to put – the movies into the theater. Do you like that? that. Yeah, that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I like that. Freaking Last Jedi reference all <laughs> up in here. Um, so I, I, it makes a lot of sense if it's on hiatus. So mm-hmm. I wonder how long that hiatus is gonna be. Do you think we'll we will get a movie in the 2022 release window, or are we looking at a, at a movie, a Star Wars movie not coming to theaters for at least five years? I mean, they they're clearly they're they're. Probably focusing on the fact that Mandalorian's about to come mm-hmm. out, right? right? And that I think that's that show's going to be really good. Yeah, I think that's going to be probably one of the best new Star Wars yeah. things we've seen since the prequels. <laughs> yeah. Um. And uh. And also, they're making they're going to be making money off the theme parks. They're making they're going to be making money off of merch, right? Yeah. There's going to be Disney a bunch Plus of stuff that they, and... they maybe they don't need movies right now. Maybe they they want to focus on the other Star Wars series that that, that they have in mind. Right. Mm-hmm. They could be uh, Obi-Wan. Uh, there's a report out there. The Obi-Wan series is going to begin filming in July of 2020 next year. Right. So we're going to look forward to that. That can sounds like conceivably is the next series after The Mandalorian, yeah. which give me that, all of that. Put it in my face right now. I love that. Then yeah, we have Cassie and Ander. Yeah, well, there it is. Mm-hmm. Then we have Cassie and Ander. Mm-hmm. So those are the three that we can look forward to Disney+. Plus Movies? Ryan well, Johnson, there's a, a rumor now that uh, he, his trilogy of movies isn't going to happen. Yeah, uh, which I, I think I, it's. I think uh, that's probably true. I've yep. been predicting that for a year. Yeah, that I think the Ryan Johnson thing was never going to happen. Uh, and oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and thank, all you, the, uh, thank you, Cody. Thank you. My favorite changes, soundbite. Uh, stand in my light. All the changes, <laughs> though. Um, I think this is a a smart decision at this point because. If you're wrapping up nine movies, right, yeah. this whole Skywalker storyline, but you want people to take a breath. Of and course. I think Mandalorian allows them to take a breath. Kenobi can allow them to take a breath. There's mm-hmm. animated series that are coming out yep. as well. There's more going on with Star Wars. Star Wars. It's going to stay in people's minds. And also, remember what people have been saying, though? I like the idea of waiting. for Where, where was the time where I could wait a year or two yeah. or five years for the next Star Wars movies? I want that. So that's going to come like back into play. It's just like a rainfall play. of like – or a waterfall right. of like in your face. Another Star Wars movie. I don't care that you're not done with this one. You're yeah. just right. shoving it in her face. Right. And, and which it, – it's, it's kind of dumb of us nerds to complain because, you know, we – as kids, this is probably our dream to have all of these Star Wars and superhero movies right, come up. Right. But it is, it is, it does get a little tiring. It does, yeah. it does. And I think also, and this is kind of what made me, as I was reading the article last night, I was thinking to myself, well, look, Kathleen Kennedy's contract runs out in 2021 right now. The extension runs out in 2021. Feige, they've already said he's going to produce a film. A film. A film, yeah. a Star Wars film. Mm-hmm. They handed him this big Marvel job recently, the CCO. So I think this is all kind of in motion here behind the scenes yeah. for uh, either Kennedy to have a graceful exit mm-hmm. and for Feige to slide into that situation. Because having this time now. Slide into her DMs. Yeah, yeah sure. It's, <laughs> having this imagine? time now, you know, to not to not have to worry about these Star Wars movies. He has time to understand how this Star Wars thing works on this side of the fence. Of course, he's got some knowledge having been a Marvel under the umbrella of Disney. But. Now this is time to really sit down and kind of look at how this whole thing is constructed and maybe come up with a game plan where Feige kind of slides into the position that Kathleen Kennedy was in and she moves on to something else. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm saying it's possible. I, I don't think he has time. He just became this, like, mm-hmm. the, 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 what, the grand wizard, grand, the grand, like, poobah. grand yeah. poobah of, like, all of Marvel. Mm-hmm. So I think that he is probably going to be um, doing that. But I think he'll do his, his movie. Yeah, You don't think he'll slide in? To take over Kathleen yeah. Kennedy, not with his jobs at Marvel. Okay. At least not for a while. Not for a while, at least, maybe. Yeah. I'm looking at Dave Filoni. You think that, Filoni would slide in? 
That makes more okay. sense if maybe unless maybe he becomes like the TV person, right? And and Kathleen that comes up and Kathleen becomes a movie person still like later mm-hmm. when we come back when we come back from this hiatus. Okay. So, but it makes sense to me. I mean, we we've had so many Star Wars movies in yeah. how in mm-hmm. how many years? Yeah. 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 Like four. Yeah. Four we, years. We've yeah. Had, so like, we're gonna have three three of the the new sequel trilogy, Rogue One. So, so yeah. mm-hmm. that's a yeah. lot. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope his. Uh, I wonder what his movie is. Uh, that's that's the one. Feige's. The Feige's. Yeah. yeah. What would you want to see? Luke Skywalker. I want to. I want a Luke Skywalker like a prequel? movie prequel to Force Awakens. I want to see everything go down. I want to okay. see Ben Solo fall to the dark side, mm. and I want to see that effect on Luke, and then. When the movie ends, we know how, how it all went down before Force Awakens. A Sebastian Stan Luke doing no, that? No, no, no. I think no. you could bring in Mark Hamill. And you, because look at what he did. The, and you DH? Look, look at his, what he looked like at the end of The Last Jedi. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, when he's on crate. Right. Um, he projected that image of when Ben Solo mm-hmm. fell to the dark side. Uh-huh. That that Luke, right? That's right. what you want to see. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to see that movie. I just okay. don't know if Mark would do it again. I don't know if he would either. Uh, he said he doesn't want to maybe do it anymore. He said, I'm, uh, I'm done after right. the Rise mm-hmm. of Skywalker. Right. But then again, there's also money mm-hmm. that could maybe change his mind. <laughs> there's money. And a good I mean, script. I would do it. And a good Pay script. me and I'll be Luke. <laughs> Kevin Fe- if Kevin Feige was shepherding that kind of idea, yeah. I think it would be really fantastic to see. And I think it would also do a lot for the fandom that maybe didn't like the Luke Skywalker and The Last Jedi to right. see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I think it would also show, really show why... He went where he went in yeah. the Last Jedi, and 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 get more character into it. And yeah, because a lot of people were upset that they didn't like what happened to Luke, right? Yeah. right. But I think including I, Hamill. Uh, yeah. Well, he mentioned it, right? But then then he had to like appease the fans, <laughs> right? Because, because he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. you guys, you guys, calm down. It's just an opinion, right? Uh, but uh, this is not a big fucking deal in the works in the words of Mark. Yeah, uh, exactly. But um, I'm, I th- I mean, it would be interesting to just to see that, right? To see to see the character uh, evolving from you know being a hero mm-hmm. at the end of Return of the Jedi and then going through all this crap with with his nephew and like that is an interesting storyline to see, like how he ended up being you know bitter and and wanting to be left alone. Because that that I didn't hate what happened to Luke. I actually thought right. it was cool. I just wish I had seen more of it, yeah. more of the development of I it. I think that's fair. Because he, it makes sense uh, uh, what happened to his character. Hence my movie. Yeah. Hence the movie I would like to see yeah. because I think it would be interesting. And and personally, I thought when you're talking about Luke Skywalker, my favorite kind of character in all of film. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's mm-hmm. the one that spoke to me when I was little. And Schnepp is talking to us right now. That just went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he Schnepp, disagrees. Yeah, I don't know if he disagrees or if he agrees with me because <laughs> Schnepp, I know. Did the the last Jedi grew on him? Um, I I yeah. think it's interesting when you have a hero and they save the universe at the end of one trilogy, and then right. you meet up with them years later, and they're they're falling on hard times. That to me spoke to me so much. It's because it made me feel like, okay, y- like you get you, it, you get it. You, mm. Well, it's like thick Thor hero- to me. I when, get it. Right thick when you're Thor heroic, everything, and then you just continue to be heroic for the rest of your life. It made me feel like it's like you can, even though you you do good in the world, have a bad day or have a ba- or, or fall perfect. on hard times. Nobody's perfect. Right. I just identified with it. So I think to go deeper into that idea yeah. through a movie, that's what I yeah, and that's see. I agree because hmm. you can be a hero, but you're not perfect. Not even Superman's perfect, right? Yeah, right. and so because imagine everybody. It, it's interesting to for me to have grown up. Uh, being a huge fan of Batman and kind of hating Superman, being like, oh, this Boy mm. Scout thing, he's all that, you know. And then uh, and then as I've gotten older, I, I from all the different iterations of these characters, it must be really it, it would be really crazy to have that much responsibility and that much power. Right. Yeah, and, right. And, and always thinking that you have to do the right thing, and especially when everybody's depending on you like that. That, that gets exhausting. Right. Mm, so yeah. so that's why some heroes become villains in the words of the great Christopher Nolan Dark Knight. Yeah. Right. So, right. So I yeah that's that's just my pick. I don't know if you guys have any any speculation on what a, a, yeah, a Feige I, movie could I be. I wouldn't want him to do anything to do with whatever happened before. I'd want sure. him to start something completely new. Yeah, and who's I get that. Who's the guy in the video game Star Killers? Who's the guy in the video game? Sam Witwer? No, no, the guy in the video game. No, the character. From Battlefront? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in the, uh, the... Force Unleashed? Yeah, the Force Unleashed. Oh, okay. uh, that guy. 
I would like to see that guy, that character. I'm sorry I can't come up with it right now, but that Star character. Killer. Alex is Star Killer, right? Yeah, Star Killer. Yeah, Star Killer. That's I'd, right. Thank I'd like you. to see Star Killer. That would be a fun thing for to, to see on uh, live action on uh, screen. Or if you, you know, we've we've been clamoring for that Knights of the Old Republic. And now with Benioff and Weiss not doing it, that Knights of the Old Republic uh, uh, slot opens That's up. That's true. Would he do something And Sam Woodward would back? totally do it, too. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Yeah, because oh, yeah. he's awesome. He's, yeah. all, he's amazing. Oh, absolutely. We need to get him on our show. It'll be, yeah, we we do yeah. and it'll be interesting to see what they're doing i mean it's like i hate us right now i think is is smart yeah. let's see how the the disney plus streaming series mm-hmm. do um and i think they do need to really look at their movies because i think even though i love um most of the movies in the new era of mm-hmm. disney mm-hmm. Uh, aside from solo um i think that they could use some planning and i think they could use some time to really take an idea of what mm. they're what they're doing next. Yes. So maybe this no. is a good thing. Yes, I I think it's a good thing. I think I think um, taking a break will make the fandom miss Star Wars yes. more, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe hopefully we'll finally stop fighting. Probably not, but let's hope. What about so, the Mandalorian? Maybe that will pull everybody together. I think that's bring us all together. I, I think that is good. Yeah. Ho- that that is the hope. But yeah. um, moving on to more important news, Mark. Yes, there, I, there's some very we, important news. Very very important news that uh, part of our audience uh, probably I'm not sure what the percentage is of furries, but Ian McKellen uh, <laughs> has something to say about the uh, horror movie that we're all going to see in December, uh, the Cats musical adaptation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Is it every oh, time we you, say Katie. cats? <laughs> okay. So the cats movie. That, is, that, that's how we're going to take our calls today. Cody. Yeah. The cats mo- movie, thank you, is uh, coming out the same weekend, <laughs> speaking of Star Wars, as The Rise of Skywalker. Oof. Okay. I'm going to, I, I want to see both. I, I'm going to see Cats. I'm going to see Cats, too. I'm very excited I'm go- to see this have to. ridiculous looking you movie. I cannot wait. I think everybody needs to smoke a gigantic bowl. <laughs> and if walk you're it. of age, I, yes. I, If you're of age. <laughs> yes, yes. I probably won't get to do the junket, but if I did the junket, I would wear a cat outfit the whole time <gasps> interviewing people. You should do the junket. That would be fun. Would, would you really? Would you dress like full makeup Cats musical? Yes. Okay, we need to do this. I, I, I would love to do it. <laughs> this okay. is the greatest thing. I would cats. love to do it. Okay. <laughs> as Mr. Mistopheles, or who would you dress as? Yeah, What's what? a Spanish cat? El gato. El gato. <laughs> El gato volador. El gato. Remember that song? <laughs> I Mark's love the Cody. It, even in Spanish, he does it. Oh my yeah. God. El gato. <laughs> Are you a fan? Perfect. Are you a fan of musicals, John? Of course, I love musicals. Okay. Yeah. There, I almost, there's a new book that came out. Well, great. That, I mean, Greatest Showman. I don't know. If I know. Really well, and that's what I think is a smart. You know, you know, you know we could battle all day if you want. But that's why it's smart to drop this here. I think because I think what happened a couple of years, uh, yeah, when Jumanji a couple of years ago, yeah, had, and the Greatest Jedi. Showman, mm-hmm. both those like drop it in December, went on to make all this money. Mm-hmm. So they they think there are there's this uh, audience for these movies at this time mm-hmm. that will make some money for them. So I Les think it's Mis. smart with Les Mis. I think it's smart with cats to drop it this time. I think <laughs> I think it's interesting to see how people are going to react to it. And already from the trailer. The trailer was a social media sensation. Mm-hmm. Whether they wanted that to happen or not, I think it gets people now going like, I got to see what this is all about. So right. I think it's smart as hell. It's good counter-programming to Star Wars. And, you know, who doesn't want to see cats <laughs> Alex, did you just did you just look up Gigantic Bull yeah, on I Google did. search? For, for Roka when he's at the junket? No, they said we're going to smoke a gigantic bowl. Oh. So we just Who looked into that? it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fair enough. Uh, nice uh, Mark did. Yeah, yeah I said true. gigantic bowl. Also, I am very much enjoying <laughs> the Twitter mentions right now that are taking the image of Ian McKellen as a cat uh-huh. and just going close up on that. Because <laughs> it's so good. Because it's so, so good. So what did Ian McKellen have so to say, this Mark? Is the, this is the thing. When, every, when that <laughs> thing dropped, everybody went, what the hell am I looking at right mm-hmm. now? It really was this weird thing. So he did talk about what... What like behind what is behind the CGI and why they did this and how it's going to affect the movie and all this. But right. he said the stage show Cats was not about a lot of people being convincing as cats, but it was about human beings discovering their cat-like nature. And it was hugely successful. So he's speaking with an entertainment tonight like this, and they ask him, like, yeah, people really didn't like the uh, CGI on the cats because uh-huh. of that, that thing. And so this is what he said. And then he continued saying... Uh, when it was now being done in film, <laughs> the temptation, I think, must have been to turn <laughs> turn those actors into cats. Like Lion King. It made them look like real cats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just heard I was broke. trying to find the Lion King one for that. Oh. Okay. Aww. But they're not real cats. 
Oh man, we're way off. Uh, there it's pe- a rock star that Cody drank. This is this is where we get interesting. There are people playing cats, and that is the notion of the film. And it's been done very wittingly, I think, and particularly the dancers. To see a young person discovering the cat in them, your jaw, your jaw just drops with delight. Dame Judy and I, and James Corden, and all the rest, Taylor Swift, we're all busy doing our version of Cats. I, so, so we're supposed to go watch this movie and find our inner cat. I'm not mad about that. Yes. I'll go dressed as a That's cat too. That's the whole point. But- and to be fair. Uh, CG is ne- is not ever completed usually when they show a trailer. It mm-hmm. might look True. better. It's just that the design <laughs> looks really freaky and weird. Like uh, it, lo- it looks uh, like it should have been renamed to furries instead yes, of cats. Yes, I mean she's dancing on a gigantic <laughs> table with like salt and pepper shakers that are bigger than her head, and I'm like. <laughs> I appreciate you wanting to defend this. <laughs> I appreciate you wanting to defend yeah, this. Yeah, listen, I know you're a cat if, inside and out. You're I going, do love cats. If you're going to release a trailer like this, you don't. You want to make sure the CG is finished because musicals already have an uphill battle at the box office. Right. The last thing you want, and this is a legendary musical, yes. so the last thing you want to do is come out with a, a CG that's going to be made fun of. I appreciate that Ian McKellen, who I saw when I was in London doing his one-man show recently, uh, wants to say this stuff, but I will say to you, this sounds to me like, come see our two-hour acting class when we stand around, having been an actor and having been in those classes, yeah. where we imitate being a cat for two hours. Do a cat right now. Do it. <sighs> I don't know if I can... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 do a cat on catnip. Go. <laughs> Jeez. You will never see me do that. I'm a dark person, and I, yeah, thank you. Yeah, see you later, everybody. That's quite a lot. I was going to lift so, my leg up, but that can't happen anymore at this age. Yeah. Well, uh, that's about all the time we had to talk about news, but we do want to uh, do a few plugs uh, yeah. before we go on break. We're also going to have, uh, when we return, we're going to have the lovely Ashley Robinson yeah. uh, join us. Uh, she has some uh, cool stuff to talk to us about uh, uh, charity for uh, to help veterans, uh, which is great for uh, Veterans Day and weekend coming up, coming yeah. up. And, and the uh, troops out there now with the ex- uh, operation gratitude yeah. yeah i love it i i donated last year i yep. think which was great so we'll we'll have her on um so first of all uh you guys know uh for your consideration our, our series uh with the lovely perry nemiroff uh, mm-hmm. scott holy shit mance and uh jeff snyder holy um <laughs> thank you cody uh we are actually going to partner with arclight cinemas to have a FYC screening series that's coming yeah. up. So check that out. Uh, November through February for Oscar season. That's exciting. Uh, they, they will all be there, uh, including, I'm sure, some of us at some point. Sure. Um, additionally, we have two horror comedy sketches to plug. Uh, one is from our lovely... Roxy Stryer. Yes. <laughs> and it is, uh, can you talk about it, Mark? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, a very interesting short where they are watching The Bachelorette mm-hmm. eating kale. Mm-hmm. And then things go awry. I'll just say that. Okay. I'll just say that. It's really funny. I mean, you, you guys, you and Roxy, I just, you know, obviously adore. And you guys just rocking it outside of Collider Live doing your things. We have fun. You have fun. So this is a hysterical short. Uh, and I, as I told Roxy, when she is back next week, we're going to talk a little bit more on it so right. she can tell us a little bit about the, the process of filming, how it got made, and, and all her stories on Yes, that. and you can check it out, I believe, in on her YouTube channel. Roxy, on her YouTube I, I think channel. it's just Roxy Stryer. And we uh, dropped a link in the uh, description here. Correct. Boom. Uh, also, uh, about a few months ago, I directed a horror comedy sketch as well called Axe Murderer. It's on my channel, Super Dork House. Brett Sheridan uh, was uh, the main star, basically. He's Mr. Hilar- Wiggly. He's hilarious as always, so you can check that out. Uh, we will be talking about these stupid things that we do on the site a lot more because we like to have fun here on this silly show yes <laughs> absolutely do you have anything any, any fun stuff that you that you got going on outside roca yeah, yeah. Him, he, why don't you I'm do a go film them doing a cat thing yeah why don't you do like a cat's horror comedy sketch should we do <laughs> one should, well, sure do you I'll, dance I'll can we can of course we... i dance okay it's I'm happening Latino. It's wait <laughs> i'm gonna come up with a cat's yeah. horror movie there's another one yeah I'm going to figure it out. Oh, I would like that. Because that would be okay, really fun. Uh, I have to use my hallway at my apartment complex before I leave because yeah. it's the most creepiest. And then they redid it and put the most god-awful carpet down that, like, reminds me of the Shining carpet. So it's just like, <laughs> great, let's just do this. Great. Well, that sounds awesome. We're going to write a Cats musical uh, starring the Collider crew. That's Perfect. what's happening. So we will be back. We are going to break. We will take your calls. Ashley Robinson We were hey, will be joining us. Uh, go to the bathroom. 
I'm gonna go take a shit, Alex. Hey guys, it's Perry here to let you know that Movie Talk is moving. We've had a great time in this 3 p.m. Pacific slot, but guess what? We want you to start your day with Collider Movie Talk, so we're moving. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get a longer show with some brand new segments, so tune in starting Monday, September 16th, 9 a.m. Pacific. See you there. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. Hey everyone, we've this had is John Taylor Roca. On. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations. And I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, and, uh, podcast, baby? interviews oh, wrong, all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the Blue Brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops in on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hi, I'm Amy Dallin, one of the hosts of Collider Heroes. And starting right now, you can catch our show Tuesday nights with a new Collider Heroes and a longer Collider Heroes podcast where Koi and I are going to talk your ears off. You already know that's coming. So make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe, and find us on the Collider Heroes podcast feed for all of that sweaty goodness. The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness. We talk about slashers. We talk about space horror. You name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out. Get scared. Hopefully you survive the Witching Hour. I know this song. What is it? I thought it was How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, John that's what Powell. it sounds like. John, sounds like, John Powell. Yeah. yeah. But what is it, Cody? This is generic royalty-free music oh. from <laughs> JinglePunks.com to avoid those copyrights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that makes sense. Oh, that's that amazing. Makes sense. We are back on Collider Live on this lovely Friday, Viernes, and Ashley Robinson. How are you? Yeah, Thanks yeah, for joining so us. Good. Oh, I want to be 
greeted by applause everywhere. Yeah, I know you got it. You got the canned <laughs> applause. From now on, just have it on your writer to mm-hmm. say only will show up if there's applause. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I want that and a cup of coffee. I'm very easy to place. Okay. <laughs> Did you want coffee? Did you get something? We can get I'm going to go to Starbucks because yesterday they launched my favorite basic white girl drink, the peppermint mocha. <laughs> there you go. It's holiday season. It is the holiday season. Are the, are the red cups out? They are. They're, they're, okay. Yeah, and yesterday they gave you a free reusable red cup, but they didn't put your drink in the red cup. So I still killed a tree for it. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Damn it. No. killing Damn a tree it. one Poor, cup at a time. Poor Groot. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Ashley, you are joining us because you actually have something really cool to talk to us about. Uh, yeah. That is a charity uh, that you're working with, that you're partnering with. Uh, you and Jason Inman, yeah. correct? Yeah. So I'm sure viewers remember Jason Inman back in the deep dark days of the Collider Arrow show. Yeah, both um, that's yeah. right. Yeah. When yeah. he made his debut here, that's ah, how we ah. met you for yes. the first time, yes, John, agreed. doing the flash side of that. Uh, so Jason, if people aren't familiar, uh, <laughs> was in the military. He was a veteran. He deployed overseas mm-hmm. for a year. And when he was over there, he received a bunch of care packages. And one of them had an issue of Ultimate X-Men in it, which for him was a big deal. He'd fallen out of comics. And that really brought him back into our nerdy fold. And so... This is our fifth anniversary of doing the Jawin Comic Drive for Soldiers, where we try to raise a bunch of comics to send in conjunction with Operation Gratitude, which is a wonderful charity, um, to service members overseas, recuperating in hospitals all over the world, and to their family back at home. And for the month of November, we're trying to raise 15,000 comics. To date, we've sent over 135,000 comics to service members and their families. And we're doing a big kickoff event if you're in Los Angeles. Um, at a Collector's Paradise in North Hollywood on Sunday, the day before Veterans Day. Oh, nice. That's nice. so cool. Yeah. What time is that at? It starts at noon okay. and it goes until people stop showing up. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they, we very generously have a lot of amazing artists coming out. Uh, I'm sure our Jackson, who draws Darby, is coming. Bernard Chang is coming. And if you donate 20 comics or more, you get free. Sketch Norm Rapman is coming. who worked on Superman. Ooh, uh, and there's a crazy. whole bunch of great event details on Twitter and on Facebook. So, so people can bring any type of comic book that they want to donate. Any type. We do recommend that they're in good reading condition. Right, yes. You know, if you if you would buy it out of a bin for yourself then we don't recommend that you pass those on to the troops and we do ask people to try to keep them PG-13 because they are going to be sent to families back at home and uh, the lovely volunteers who are packing these aren't doing like a quality check so if you want to donate Walking Dead and Zenoscope that's fine that's on you but that's not necessarily what we're asking for for the sake of the drive (laughs) that's wonderful Ashley and uh, where uh, can they go online operationgratitude.com or there was another uh, link you said yeah, as well. so if you go to comic drive for service members okay. dot com, that'll take you right to our page with all the event details. If you go to Facebook and you search uh, Jawin Comic Drive kickoff event that has all the event details and then all the video details and stuff are pinned to my Twitter. They're pinned to Jason's Twitter and YouTube.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Everything is right there. The video is the easiest way, right? Because we'll just tell you right. everything okay. that you need to know in a nice little seven like minute yeah. clip. People don't want to read. No, no. <laughs> people are lazy. It's hard. The nice thing, too, about our event on uh, Sunday, or we partnered with... Um, Collector's Paradise as well. They have three locations across Los Angeles. They'll match anything that you donate. Oh, um, nice. So okay, if that's you awesome. donate, they'll donate the same amount. Um, and then you're saving on shipping because otherwise, people all over the rest of the country, uh, you do have to ship them to Operation Gratitude. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So okay. you go, you get a nice medium-sized flat rate box that costs $12. You mm-hmm. can put up to 60 comic books in there. Nice. So that's what I recommend people do. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. And I just retweeted from my Twitter as well. So Thanks, if you, you want to go there and, and check it out. And these links will also be on on the, our video's uh, description from today's episode. So, exactly, so check yeah. that out. Yeah. Uh, John, you're yeah. a veteran. Did you yeah. did you ever read comics while you were? Of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, all the time. I mean, that's something that we kind of bonded on. Because you're when you're a veteran, when you go into the service, nine times out of 10, you're 19, 20 years old, 18 years old. Yeah. So, want to see the world. <laughs> yeah, you want to see the world. But you also, like, what, what, what are the common things you can connect on? Movies, sports, comic books. That's the yeah. thing. So you can talk about. Because we all grow up, like, kind of reading that stuff or having access to it for the most part and so you just exchange what was your favorite artist what was your favorite issue what was your favorite run blah 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 so those are great conversations to have and then you we used to sneak we used to go off to the bx yeah. and look at the which is where you go the to get stuff and get to a, a toiletry items and what have you and convenience things and so and you'd look and see what comics there are and of course it's a little bit behind because it's a military yeah. base <laughs> mm-hmm. but you're you're what you're reading them and you're getting and you're comparing notes and and stuff like that afterwards so and then trading them 
And right? Canada, which is our, uh, our PX is called the Can-X. No, the Can-X. Yeah. 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 Which is my fun detail. I like that. Yeah. I can X. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and this is great. Look, I, I've known Jason, like she's, like Ashley said, for a while now since the Green Lantern stuff when we first were doing those recap shows. And Jason's got a great heart, and he's an, he's a, he's like a, 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 he loves the soldiers. He loves his time that he served. I always feel a little bit lower than you because Jason actually went out and served in the theater of war. It's I not just, a competition. It's not. But like, <laughs> I, respect, not. I respect his service so much more because of that. And so I have a special place in my heart for Jason. And to see that he does things like this yeah. that kind of like gives back to his time to people who are going uh, to serve our country and defend our country, uh, uh, it's a great thing to send them stuff to make them feel like a little piece of home is there with them or or they can pass this around. And who knows? Those comics can spark connection mm-hmm. and friendships amongst those troops that maybe wouldn't have been there before. So and yeah. hopefully they can take people who are working there now who might leave. They can lead them to careers like you yeah, and or like yeah. Jason, like well, yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. the industry, which is so cool. That's yeah. so important because that's, that's the thing. I mean, we actually had uh, Roland Emmerich uh, mm-hmm. come oh, in yeah. this week because he's promoting his movie Midway coming out this weekend for Veterans Day. Yeah. And uh, one of the things we talked about is that there's no winners in war. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we have to remember uh, our history and we have to remember that we wouldn't be here because of these people, uh, not just in our country, but veterans in other countries yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, after war, the, a lot of these people don't have the same opportunities uh, we do because you know we we get the opportunity to have another type of education or mm. or uh, another career. So this is amazing. This is great that w- what you guys are doing. Yeah. yeah, and if you want to see what Jason looked like when he was 21, go look at the old pictures that are up in the video. I love those <laughs> pictures. I love those pictures. They are great. <laughs> and I remember Jason had the greatest line against Snyder in a schmodown. Do you remember that? No, what I is do. It? Oh my <laughs> god, he goes what is it, like war films or something yeah. was, was was spun and uh Jeff Jeff Snyder was like, "Well, let's go to war then." And and Jason was like, "Okay, as the only person that's been to war, right, yeah. let's do this." <laughs> yeah. And Snyder just got up and left. Yeah. <laughs> One of the rare and, and I and I blew that that telling of it, but it was like it was great. such a great clap back on that. <laughs> that's that's awesome. It was amazing. So, uh, Ashley, what what are you working on right now? Uh so right now Jason and I have a new comic that's coming out in December. It's called Science, with an exclamation point, Elements of Dark Energy. <laughs> so you got to say it like a baseball announcer. Science! Uh, we were actually on Collider, a bunch of Collider shows to yes. promote that last yeah. year when we were uh, crowdfunding that. So that's coming out December 18th. So it's coming out right in time for the holiday season. You can order it on Amazon. You can get the digital copy on Comixology right now, awesome. which is very exciting. And then the first thing that we came to our Collider friends to promote was Jupiter Jet. Yep. And we're working on volume two of that. That's we awesome. just nice. started. Can, so. can you talk a little bit about what it is without spoiling? It's both Jupiter Jet and Science. Yeah. So uh, Science is what if Harry Potter went to a Star Trek school instead of a magic school Ooh. and was a nice Indian American lesbian? No. <laughs> <laughs> and it focuses around her name is Tamsin. It focuses around she comes to the school because her father used to be the headmaster of it, but he has since passed away and his consciousness lives in her Google glasses. Mm. Oh my. God. And so she's there with his consciousness to unravel the mystery of what happened to him. And of course, they fall into dark matter and scientific adventures. And then Holy Jupiter shit. Jet is a little more it's like uh, Black awesome. Mirror Harry I know. Potter. This yeah. is like really cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little more uh, science fantasy. I always say it's like, what if Kim Possible met the Rocketeer? Right. 16 year old girl. Rocketeer. Yeah. Ooh, you, just, you just made us all <laughs> yeah. sweatier. Sweatier. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 16 year old girl discovers a jet pack from, also from her deceased father because uh, clearly we have father issues. Mm, and, uh, it's fine. I mean, it's, yeah. a good, it's a good launching point yeah. for stories, yeah. I think. Fights bad guys who have glowing eyes and are maybe robots. And then if people have read it, as I know a few people at the table have, uh, there's a big fiction, science fiction twist at the end of it. And so volume two is dealing with the ramifications of what that means. And it jumps a year into the future. So Jackie's a year older. Her brother's a year older. Mm. And uh, there's a new bad guy. This this cool. So it's like a comic book series. Can you yeah. imagine? I love this. <laughs> we always said we have a five volume plan for that. So now to be on volume two is really exciting. That is yeah. exciting. So can I ask you just because uh, I've been interviewed you know, comic book writers mm-hmm. and artists before uh, and clearly it's a very different medium that than you know making a film mm-hmm. or a TV show like what do you think is is uh, the the pros and cons for you as a, as a creator interesting um a big pro is having a co-writer so because Jason and I for these projects we're 
working together. We have different projects um, that we've done separately. Like he's done Super Soldiers and I did Aurora, which we were also both on here to promote. Um, being able to work together is great because we really balance each other's strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And having someone to check you means that your collective first draft is so much better. Right. Like you've already gone through the process of working with an editor, which is something that we're really, really lucky to have. And then making a comic specifically, it's so collaborative. Like there's seven people easily who go into a book. And so hopefully your artist can elevate your work Mm -hmm. or your colorist or your letterer. And everyone's adding a little bit onto that. The Mm -hmm. con is that you're working on seven different people's schedules (laughs) and creatives were not great at hitting deadlines. Um, So at some point at the end of the day, you have to be like, hey, knock, knock, knock. You signed a contract that you would finish it in this amount of time. Yeah, and it yeah. sucks. That. Is, is that how writers uh, t- talk to each other? They whisper. Uh, <laughs> that's how you speak to your collaborators you want to work with again in the yeah. future. <laughs> right. But right, right. when you're the one who's like, "It's my money," then you can be in that position. <laughs> and there you, you go. Know? And I th- and we've all been in that position. Whether it's like someone is coming late to the studio, or this conflict has come up. Like mm-hmm. how, wh- the minute you bring in other people, it becomes exponentially so much more fun and so much more beautiful, but mm-hmm. like so much more complicated. Mm, yeah. <laughs> right. That's that's awesome. Well, you guys. Uh, if you want to help, uh, if you can help this weekend, uh, you know, please check out, uh, as I said, all these links, Operation Gratitude, uh, the event that Ashley and Jason are putting together are on our description of our uh, episode today. Yeah. Um, Cody, can we open up those phone calls, those call lines? Oh, those call yeah. lines. Phone, phone calls. Lines. Phone lines. Yeah. Phone That's lines. like English is so hard. Yeah. The, the, what is it? The the can with the string? Yeah. Let's just Fon- open those it, up. What, how, it's like the idiom thing that's so hard for me. It's yeah. called yeah. Ouvrir la téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Why do you? Oh. 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 Everybody speaks a language here but Whoa. me. That was beautiful. You speak American, man. Yeah. I, yeah. That's a language I mean, it's like, I'm the whitest guy here right now <laughs> with like zero, like zero bringing to the table white. But you do I'm know talking. some Spanish. As for dad, I do. There oh. you go. See, oh. that's, that's what he <laughs> says when... I when always... <laughs> I do this on purpose. I do the es verdad. <laughs> Real. Hola, me. That's okay. My Spanish is about uh, dos agua, por favor. Yeah. <laughs> That's not all I know. That's two waters, but, please. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's two but, water, but I'll let, oh, I'll let it go. I'll let it, let it go. I'll let it go. <laughs> I just, I just pulled a Christian and just... She tried. And tried. her French was beautiful, Her done. French was beautiful. It well, really she's Canadian. Was. She, she speaks French. You know, no, it's kind of in there. Yeah, right. anyway. Je veux uh, chocolat croissant, so s'il vous plaît. Was that a meow I heard? Two What's, aguas. Aguas? Let's see. Ah. Was that a meow? Not right now. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, is somebody meowing? I'm just hearing it now and automatically. Yeah, every time we said cats, uh, there was a meow that came up. And so we, mm-hmm. we enjoyed the cats <laughs> thing that you're not doing it. Hey, when you want to talk about cats again, let me know. I'll bring Brago on. He'll love it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? It's my cat. Cat. <laughs> cat. Named after Aragorn's horse. <laughs> yeah. I love right. that are, cat. You, are, are you excited for the cats musical? I, coming out? Look, Loki, we all knew cats sucks, right? Like, we've known that for decades. So I don't know why everyone was shocked when this trailer came out. I love it because the meme game that has come out of yes. that movie is so strong. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Speaking of cats, do we have a call, Cody? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are on Collider Live. Who are you? Um, Jeremiah Morris. Hey, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Where Jeremiah. are you calling from? Uh, Indianapolis. Welcome. How's it going? What do you got for us today? Uh, my question was, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Jason and Roka for their service. Oh, thank uh, you. Thank you. That's very kind. I, do, I really appreciate it. Most of my family was in the military. Man, Respect. That, that really, I really appreciate that. That's awesome, man. My, thank you for saying. My question is, uh, I love the new Star Wars trailer. And yeah. the reason mm. being is that John Williams' music. Mm. Best and part of Star Wars. It, yes. You're not kidding. But uh, it hits me. I've listened to that trailer. Just listened probably ten times. Yeah. What's your favorite trailer music? Ooh. Oh, like it, like forever, oh, not shit. just Star Wars? Forever, yeah. Okay. The Star Wars. Mm. Yeah. But our, our favorite Star uh, trailer music. Just in general. Okay. Okay. Mm. Thank you for the call. Ooh, that's hard. So I, I guess I, because they lifted this from the movie, and then whenever there was this, like, epic Kind of if there was romance, if it was a yeah. period piece, James Horner's score from Legends of the Fall. Mm. They would yeah. pull that music all the yeah. time to just give you the feels. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's, but it's Legends of the Fall, the right. score. Right. But I, I, I noticed it popping up a lot. So I'll say that. But then if we're doing Star Wars, the last Jedi trailer music, the bump, 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 bump. Like, yeah. whoa, there was some great 
trailer music in that yeah. one. Arclight like, also plays the Legend of the Fall score before the movies all the time. See? Like, and we're always shazamming, being like, why do we know this song? Yeah. Mm. It's James Horner, man. Yeah, Gone no, too that's soon. a good one. Um, I think my first thought was uh, they use Hans Zimmer's The Thin Red Line score in a few mm, trailers, including uh, When Man of Steel. Uh, a trailer came out because that was whatever you think of the movie. I love the movie. Oh, that sure. trailer movie. is incredible. Yeah, it's one of the best trailers we've seen. I mm-hmm. have four trailers saved on my MacBook Pro. Uh-huh. And Man of Steel. Man of Steel is one because I will God watch it you, and get emotional mm-hmm. as F on a plane anywhere when I want to watch it. 300 yeah. is the other one. And there are great two trailers. other ones. There are oh, two other ones. 300 is a good one. 300 is a great too. trailer. Visually, it's a phenomenal trailer. And yes. the song. Yeah. yeah, that that pulsing. Karina Barana is another one they used for a while on trailers. The for Omen. A little bit. That was great. Yeah, The Omen. Yeah. yeah. Excalibur. They used those through the 80s and 90s. They used, they, you'd see that score pop up on trailers. Yeah. Every once also, while. really quick, uh, this year, the Joker trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. But I, it was, yeah. I, I was so happy when I saw that trailer. I got I got emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they used uh, a really beautiful orchestral version of uh, uh, Smile. Mm-hmm. And that just, oh, it was, I wish they had used that in the stair and the dance stair. Oh, scene. Yeah. So, but anyways, what about you, Ashley? I think you got to give it up for Inception because they used yeah. that piece of music the first time we heard the what I call the Inception fart. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, they put it in Iron Man 3, for God's yeah, sake, yeah, like yeah, for yeah. that trailer. But <laughs> when it came out and the music that was first used in the original Inception trailer, I think is really, really powerful. And it's now become such a motif in that now it's like memeable and we don't do it anymore because it's deeply annoying. Yes. But, right. uh, yeah, because they were calling it the Inception horn, but I do prefer the fart noise over that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, do you call the, what do you call the Annihilation sound? Uh, the uh, sound of Jeremy Renner's career tanking. Oh, oh my God! Boom! Oh. Oh, shots fired. Yes. <laughs> well done, he Ashley. Wasn't even, he wasn't even leading that movie. Yeah. That's, that's no, but he's in movie. it, so it's kind of like backwards a little. Oh. When is he in it? I don't remember him. Uh, he's in her... Annihilation. Yeah. When... Oh, no, 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 I was like, because I love Annihilation. Oh, and I was like, did I that's miss the one him with in the it? Funny oh, deer, right? yeah. It was a sick, sorry, it was sorry, a sick burn, Ashley, yes. and then it wasn't a burn at all. But <laughs> it was really funny. I'm not going to apologize to Jeremy Renner, but I'm going to apologize to the audience yeah. for yeah. making that mistake. But Annihilation it had that sound in the trailer. Yeah, that oh, the, sh- the shimmery yeah. Yeah, the sound. Thing, so yeah. It's I a great movie, one of the best recent sci-fi movies that you guys haven't seen. I see it, seriously. I loved it. I liked it, too. so good. Cody, we got another call? Oh. oh. <laughs> You're on Collider Live. Who are you and where are you calling from? Uh, Kevin from New York, and I have to ask myself that question at least once a day, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kevin, how are you? Good. Uh, first, I just wanted to say congrats on an awesome first week. Darina, you and Roxy have killed it. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, obviously, with our, our mark here. Yeah. Thank, thank you very hey, much. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, no, no. You. <laughs> you. You got a question Martin for us? Oh, Aww. thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Um, I guess this is just going to go to John. Oh. Uh, just, you know, just like your thoughts on the Wednesday Night Wars so far and who you got coming out on top at Folk Gear on Saturday. Wait, say this again? On the what? Just, uh, what, have you been, what have been your thoughts on the, uh, I guess, the Wednesday Night Wars so far with AEW and NXT and who you got coming out on top at the pay-per-view Saturday? Yes, we got our wow. first wrestling question wow. on Slider Live. Sports, the new, sports, yeah. sports, oh, sports, sports. <laughs> well, look, NXT is still looks like NXT. There hasn't been that much of a difference in terms to me in terms of its appearance overall. So to me, it looks like they've just put it on a, a bigger channel. That's all. AEW is coming with some fire, and I like uh, uh, Cody Rhodes' comments today about, or last night, about female wrestlers and the visa issues. I like the fact that Cody is able to talk about shit actually that's going on behind the scenes and put it out front for people to consume and take or not take, whereas WWE is more protective about things, and it's about a PR game now, and kudos to them because they are a machine now like a studio they have to operate in that way so I like the rebellious nature of AEW I think there's too much money behind NXT, behind WWE and NXT for them not to come out on top but still I like what AEW is doing doing, and it feels like the best parts of WCW back when they could go toe-to-toe with the WWE as far as the pay-per-view there's so many matches ask me about one match and I'll give you the, the, my thought well the I guess the main event then Cody and Jericho especially with that uh stipulation that Cody won't challenge for the title again if he loses. Yeah, I think Jericho wins that thing 
And then Cody kind of recedes in the back for a little bit because he's got to run things anyway. I think he's doing that on purpose. Like, he's got to push AEW, so he's going on tours, he's going on these appearances. So I think Jericho wins this thing so that Cody can kind of step back a little bit and run the organization, run AEW, and help all the other wrestlers shine more. Because that's what a true leader does, is help everybody shine, not just themselves. And so I think that's what I think is, is what Cody will do. And I think that's why Jericho will win. Thank you for the call, Kevin. And I, you, Kevin. I, I completely disagree with John. I'm kidding. I know nothing of current wrestling. <laughs> Every the time last time I watched Collider, wrestling was talking about the Giants. Jesus and immigration. <laughs> yeah, <we did. laughs> Every yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> but appreciate it too, for the question. Uh, see a lot of you in the chat going, yeah, it's a wrestling question. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> when, <laughs> yeah, when Roca's on. And yes. uh, we, we are still going to, if we get a wrestling guest, um, we are yes. going to have Roca conduct that interview. You're going to have um, Ro- Roca wrestle? Yeah, I guess. yes. That, that was on, in a cat costume. That was in play, wasn't it, <laughs> for the peanut butter falcon thing? But I don't think it's going to happen now because yeah. I'm be in Australia. Next yeah, week. yeah. We were trying to get somebody, yeah. and Very it was unfortunate. It was like right around the time we were filming live, and yeah, yep. we were going to hope to go lean on you for that. But yep. you're you're doing something. You're going yeah. down under again. Down under again. But a shrimp on the barbie, right? Oh my See, God. I can't do it. No, don't, don't do it. Well, it's fine. No, it's okay. <laughs> that, there you go. I'll just do oh, Sean Connery. We got another call here. You are on Collider Live. Who are you? Hi, this is Stephanie from Ohio. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. How are you doing? What do you got for us today? I, I'm doing well. My question is another soundtrack question. Yes. Um, what, are some, what are some soundtracks that you love that people don't usually mention as their favorite? Um, mine are the Batman Forever soundtrack. Ooh, good Little choice. Time. And, and what was the second one? Uh, Land Before Time. That's a James Corner. Oh one. yes, mm-hmm. yes. Land Before thank, Time. Thank you for the call. That's a great question. One of my, it's Mark and my favorite topic. Yeah. Uh, what do you What do you got, Mark? <sighs> so many. Uh, <laughs> I know, me too. And I'm glad she mentioned Land Before Time because James Horner, uh, I, that mm. he was my childhood other than John Williams. Like, not just Land Before Time, but An American Tale. Uh, th- th- he just, he just, a Casper is a beautiful soundtrack mm. that, yeah. that I guess a lot of people don't listen to uh, from back in the day. New, um, I think uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Johnny Greenwood. Uh, yeah. He's a half of, or one quarter of Radiohead. There Will Be Blood. Yes, and mm-hmm. he, he's worked with uh, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson a lot. Oh, yeah. So Phantom Thread is actually one of my favorite oh. recent uh, soundtracks. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I always mention John Powell, How to Train Your Dragon, the original score, is one of the best scores out there. But mm-hmm. if you want really like deep, sweaty that nobody talks about, right. Danny Elfman's The Kingdom is oh. one of the greatest um, mm-hmm. scores that because the movie just kind of came and went. It's a great movie. I actually really enjoyed The Kingdom, but that score sticks with me. Um, you as, know what's another one that I was thinking along those lines? Because sure. Danny Elfman, uh, his score for Milk. Uh, the Milk. Harvey Milk yeah, movie yeah. is also very. It's very different than Danny's other stuff, and it's it's really b- beautiful as well. I, I would even say Goodwill Hunting yeah. is such a, a, a great like score. nobody talks about mm-hmm. because it's so beautiful. Every time I hear the music that he uses when Ben Affleck's character goes at the end of the movie and knocks on the door to find yeah. you know Will and he's gone, that music starts to swell, and I'm just like, <laughs> How about them apples? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I start crying because it just it just pulls it out of me. So, yeah. um, yeah. and uh, do you have any John? Well, score wise, there's an 80s film that not a lot of people saw called uh, Promised Land mm-hmm. with Jason Gedrick, Tracy Pollan, uh, Kiefer Sutherland, Meg Ryan from the 80s. And it's a forgotten soundtrack, it, it's not out anywhere you can find it unless you bought the cassette back in the 80s. It's James Newton Howard, really early oh, James yeah. Newton Howard, and it is a beautiful score. Uh, and it's about these people coming back to their town who were high, knew each other in high school mm-hmm. and about this terrible thing that happens, tragedy that happens. And the film explores that. And it's such a fantastic score. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. And as far as soundtracks go, I think – you got to throw Top Gun on the conversation. I love the Batman Forever thing. That's great. That's a um, great under it. Uh, Batman and Robin also. Batman and Robin's not a bad one. Not a bad one. Uh, and Kill Bill. Kill Bill's a great soundtrack. But beyond yeah. the score, beyond, I like the Kill Bill soundtrack. Too. Yeah. I think for soundtracks, I think Juno's really underrated. It has a lot of great Kim, Kimia Dawson on it. Uh, yeah. Maybe a movie with diminishing returns. The older you get, and mm-hmm. the more you realize that it's written for forty-year-old women instead of sixteen-year-old women. But that's okay. <laughs> no seventeen-year-old so making a bone collector joke. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so it's Gilmore Girls. I do. Uh, 
I do really like that movie, though. I think that's a great soundtrack. I think Michael Giacchino is just generally yeah. criminally underrated. Yep. His television stuff's great. Fringe is really great. He gets taken over by yes. his protégés later on. Uh, it's really wonderful. I think his Doctor Strange score is really mm. underappreciated. Yes, I love that end credit theme. Yeah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and then I really like um, I like the score for the Good Dinosaur. I think it's a great modern western. Oh, cool. Um, and okay. that is by Michael Dana and Jeff. Michael and Jeff Dana. Sorry, oh, yeah. probably yeah. mispronounced your names. Uh, they're not composers I'm familiar with outside of that movie. But if you like that, and we were talking about Legends of the Fall earlier, if you like yeah. those kind of motifs, yeah. I think it's a really whether or not you love the movie or you're interested in Pixar and animation, it's a great soundtrack. Great no, score. that's great. And I mean, a lot of these uh, soundtracks we're talking about, they're all uh, orchestral. But mm, yes. um, I've gotten really into uh, synthesizer stuff. I mean, ever ever since you know Vangelis. Uh, yeah, in your the Blade 80s. Runner. And yeah, your but, jam. Uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, you gotta now, listen to uh, that good Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Christopher Drake. <laughs> but uh, there's also uh, like uh, Micah Levy. Uh, I don't know if you mm. guys know him, but he did Under the Skin. It's a beautiful soundtrack. Oh, it's yeah. uh, Matt Quayle, uh, the Mr. Robot score is amazing. Yeah. So lots of st- awesome music for you guys to listen to. Uh, we are unfortunately out of time. Oh, Thank you so geez, much for coming, so Ashley. Thank you for having me. Thank you to Mark, to John, to Cody and Thank Alex you. in the booth. Thank you guys for supporting us this week. We will be back for a full week next week on Collider Live. Have a good weekend. Dead ass. Dead ass.